フルカウンター Alright, boys, welcome back to the Grand Cross video. And today we have a new developer update going over their plans for the first half of 2023. Obviously, if you love me from the channel now, or even just Grand Cross in general, 2023 is going to be a massive year for Grand Cross because there are a lot of things coming out that will take your attention off Grand Cross, like, say, Black Clover Mobile and also as well, you know, Origins. People are going to be moving on from this game, not necessarily just to drop it and just, you know, the game we've forgotten, but there'll be more other shiny things to play with and people are going to lose a little bit of interest in grand frost so it is net mobile's job right now to give us a lot of hope but also to prepare a lot of content this year that keep people coming back to the game so the game doesn't just get lost in the shadow of origins and other games coming out this year so let's go through the content so firstly we're going to skip over because i kind of already read the first bit now uh this part here had me confused a little bit so they do say for this reason we are planning to add new growth elements so that it can be a goal to grow characters and we also apply the new form of the battle content so that it can be utilized to grow characters and new link main content so to me that reads as we're getting new ways to level up our characters so we're gonna get levels p past 100 i think i saw leaks in the past where he said that was coming so likely what it means here and it makes sense the way they say new linked main content because as it is right now we do have the boss battle content and obviously as right now we know that to go from 90 you have to do the top ones here to do level 100 you do the bottom ones here and if we do get level 120 characters who are we defeating to get that new material where are we doing it most likely not in this battle right here there'll probably be something new let's say like let's say a new demonic battle who knows but we'll have to wait and see but i believe that's what they're talking about right now when they do say new ways to grow characters and the big one boys we do have four nights so i want to read it here so um as mentioned our little new year's greeting the orthodox sequel of four nights of apocalypse 70 sins will inherit the worldview of services origins Origin, so we see Grand Cross and we enter Grand Cross. Uh, many people hope the story of Mediodis and also. Does that mean sins? I'm not entirely sure what that means, but let me say 70 sins. I would continue forever. See, even after the final update of the main story, scheduled for the end of this year, characters will continue to grow through the Fortnite apocalypse. Obviously, if you read the manga, you know many characters do return after a massive, like, 16 year time skip. So many cool moments. If you haven't read the manga, uh, if you plan not to read it, the anime would hopefully do it justice. The manga right now does look beautiful. So seeing our favorite characters, and not even favorite characters, but characters you know and you don't really pay too much attention to, to see them return and have a massive upgrade is so cool. It's uh, going to be so sick to see that animated. I will do my best to prepare for this year so that I can present a new story. The new story, does that mean we're getting four nights? Probably not because, once again, the anime is not even out. And I don't think it makes sense to get Fortnite's content in terms of story content in the game before we do finish the main storyline, which we know will be ending this year, probably around December this year. In addition, alongside the full development of the ongoing original elements of the Ragnarok story, we are preparing new content for Ragnarok that can be played more easily and characters of... The yeah, okay, this is the one I want to pay attention to. So... If you don't know, they mentioned it previously. People don't really pay attention to it. But in that actual like, little announcement video they made at the start of this year, they mentioned that there will be new storyline following the catastrophes. Obviously, that being... Obviously, being these characters. And they kind of tease us a little bit already with the, the actual like clown event they did a while ago. I have some actual cutscenes playing right now for you. But basically, it was just like a little mini event that seemed quite weird to add that. And that must have been like the test and face you how people will appreciate it and how it will work in the game. But how would I like it? Honestly, people as it is right now already skipped the Seraphim storyline, already skipped the Ragnarok storyline when that has actual lore and actual, you know, voice acting. So to get a catastrophe event, well, to be honest with you lot, boys, no one really cares about them. I mean, Netmarble doesn't really care about them because they haven't even added a Camilla unit since the start of the game. And obviously, we saw already that the actual last one didn't have voice acting. So if we get new story content of the actual catastrophes and it's no actual voice acting... It's going to be a little bit bland and people aren't going to really care about it. So I'm not entirely too sure what they're going to do. But I feel like that will just be the filler until it gets enough time to actually start working on the Four Nights Apocalypse content. And start getting that adapted. Because obviously by the time we start getting Four Nights in the game, like in terms of story content, the anime will likely have finished airing. And if it is a 24 episode anime, it means you'll have a lot to work with. And you'll also be able to get the voice acting. And it will just go back towards getting 70s content. I feel that's what they're probably going to do.
The story will be updated as a chapter format, so the exact same way we're going to be getting story right now. That means they will likely get one every single month. However, I'd imagine they'll probably throw in some collaborations, bring back some collaborations for a month, so they can take a break because, once again, getting the exact same story every single month might be a bit too much. But then again, they got nothing else to work on. Ragnarok is done. Seven is done, so it might be a bit easier, especially if there's no voice acting. They can probably pump out a bunch of content. And since it's a chapter... I'd like to say there'll probably be a few chapters, and if they do that for, let's say, the first half of next year, then by the time they finish the story chapter, they can probably start working on Fortnite Apocalypse, because the anime is going to be finishing airing this year, and if they go into next year, they can start working on it probably. You don't want to do it too soon after the anime, because the anime will be too fresh, so uh, we have to wait and see, but that is uh, likely what's going to happen. Alright, so for the Underground Labyrinth, quite funny to hear him say this, actually, but they do say... Basically, such as a difference in difficulty due to randomness, as a result, fixed character selections and routes were often used. Basically, what they mean here is, in the labyrinth, for example, most of us made a guide going over what the best route is. People understand, oh, just go for Summer Merlin, go for Attack Seal. It's kind of the best way to defeat it, right? But even though we have the option to pick between different characters, most of the time, 90% of us always pick the exact same characters and the exact same route. So what's the point of RNG? If anything, it just made it even harder and made it even more tedious to even play through the event, which is why I haven't even done it. Also, that's what they do mention that it's kind of um, disappointing that the way it was structured, there was no reason to actually clear the event once you've already beaten it for the first time. If you defeat it already, you're not going to do it for like another two months until it resets. But based on players' opinions and improvements were discussed for the development team, and they're actually going to introduce this in Season 3, which is literally, what, in two weeks' time, I think? Uh, so this is, yeah, next week on JP, right? Or basically in like 10 days' time, we're going to get that new update. So quite nice to see them say it now. And we now know it's coming very, very soon, so it's nice to see, right? If they had said it was going to come into Season 4, would have been a bit long. And then finally, to wrap it up, we have an update towards the Knighthood feature, which is basically saying we're going to be getting Knight Commands and Otis for Orders. And the Orders, they're going to give you basically currency to then buy stuff in the shop. That will be random boxes and exclusive items that can be used for Knighthood exclusive content at a later date. They're likely, if they haven't already done it or plan to do it, they got to bring back Conquest. Conquest, where you have four players in a team and you kind of defeat an actual like, massive boss like the Titan, um, Colossal Titan, for example. That, to me, just screams Knighthood content, where where knights in your guild are going to get together and do like a massive co-op battle. It makes sense what they haven't done now, so hopefully it's what they plan to do here. And then finally, uh, apparently, uh, champion matches. I'm not entirely too sure what that is. Is that like uh, P geared PP? But if you say they're going to change some things, I don't entirely know what that means. But, boys, that is basically it. Quite a big one, to be fair. Obviously, a lot of new content coming. More importantly, Fortnite will be coming within the next few months. Uh, to be fair, like I said, timing-wise, it makes sense to get it probably after or just before the actual JP anniversary. So, probably expect it around June, April time. That'll probably be the time to get it. And also, as well, we're going to be getting new story catastrophes to kind of replace the actual current 76 storyline. Also, hopefully a good improvement towards Labyrinth. They say improvement, but remember last time you said improvement towards the actual training grotto. It wasn't really an improvement. It was the exact same. Just now you had to skip missions. And in Osis, well, we're going to be getting uh, more knighthood options. So that's kind of cool anyway. So, boys, thank you for watching. Let me know what you're most excited for. Probably the announcement of Four Nights and the release date coming within the next few months. I will now just be saying for that. You're not going to catch me summoning. I'm done. I'm done. Saving. And we're going to 6-6 six, six Percival. Hopefully, I can get enough in six months. But you know for a fact, they're going to be probably releasing it right after the actual uh, announcement of the new light character comes to the game, which likely will be Sacred Treasure Barn. So, people are going to go crazy for him and then drop Percival right after him so you're broke and you got to spend money because the character you have so boys thank you for watching and uh, yeah peace.